Today we're going to be talking with Kevin Bobbitt. Kevin Bobbitt is the founder of KCSSU, an organization that focuses on teaching black youth their original culture through comedic science. We're going to see if we can get Kevin on the phone. Peace, brother. This is Bear. Hey, peace, bro. How you doing? I'm all right. I'm over near your neck of the woods. Wanted to see if I could pick you up to get you to come driving wild black with me. Yes, indeed, brother. Stop by. I'm home. I appreciate that, brother. I'll see you soon. No doubt. Peace, brother. Peace. Let's go pick up this brother. How you doing? Doing fine. How you doing? Always good to see yeah, you. Yeah, without a doubt, man. Always without good a doubt. To see you. It's been a while too. Yeah, we've been busy. Oh man, you've been busy too. Yeah. So I introduced, you know, who you are and told everybody about KCSSU. Right. Say hello to everybody and, and introduce who you are and what you do. Peace, everybody. Um, my name is Kevin Bobby. Um, my African spiritual name is Asa. I'm the founding director of KCSSU. That stands for Comedic Cultural Science and System of Unity. Um, Comedic dealing with all black people of African descent, African descent, and we focus on our culture and we teach all the sciences of life. And basically, what this does, it's a system that brings unity amongst our people. Mm, now. I want you to be specific as I know you do when you say bring the culture of our people because sometimes when you mention culture in these days they tend to think of what's, what mainstream media portrays as our culture. What do you mean when you speak of our, our culture? Well at the foundation of our culture is, is Maya which is divine love, peace, unity, order, balance, harmony, reciprocity, truth, righteousness, and justice. Mm -hmm. And so basically it's, it's high civilization and it's a, it's, it's a high science to teach mm -hmm. us on how we're supposed to interact with one another, treat one another, love one another. And culture is also, it's a, it's a, it's a body of ideas mm -hmm. by a group of people that's positive right. and it, it helps to cultivate our spirit so that we can be the best that we can be, not only as individuals, but more importantly, as a group of people, as a unit. And you started this how? Where did you get this information and what drove you to do? Because I know you work exclusively with children. Yes, well, I know that is your that is your passion is, is to, to teach our culture and our knowledge to our youth. Yes, um, I came up with the um, idea of starting a nonprofit organization while I was on the inside, incarcerated in federal prison um, for nine years. Mm. And so I finally, you know, after I had been locked up about three years, a brother stepped to me one day and said that, you know, I might want to use my, my time wisely. And, you know, being that I had been from the streets, um, right. living of, of life of an outlaw for so many years, I kind of took offense to it mm. and kind of balked at the brother. But that night I, when I laid down, I thought about what he said. He said, do something to improve yourself, to help your family out and help others. And so mm. I thought about that. Even though you're incarcerated. Indeed, right. Mm, and so he, he, he pointed me to a book, The Miseducation of the Negro by mm. Carter G. Woodson. Oh, and that book awo awakened something within my spirit mm. that I said, I got to go after um, this knowledge because it's a special knowledge the knowledge of self and so then I basically in a sense read a um, message to the black man by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad mm -hmm. and I joined the Nation of Islam mm -hmm. and the thing that really led me to the Nation of Islam was their love for black for people. For black people. Yes right. indeed and That's I said right. to myself I said well I love black people the way the Honorable Elijah Muhammad 
did. I love black people the way Malcolm X did. Mm -hmm. I said, so I need to dedicate and commit my life to helping our people to the best of my ability to, for self-improvement, mm -hmm. spiritual development, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And then after being in the nation for about a year, um, I was on this spiritual journey. And I was introduced to Kimmy. Um, the land of the blacks, right. and and that's where comedic comes from. Um, you know, brothers and sisters of African descent, and so it was. When I started studying that, it really resonated with my spirit, mm. and you know, things start chambers start opening up within my mind and my heart and my spirit. Um, you know, with the ancestors, the creator, nature, universe, and it was a beautiful study. I was able to connect with some some serious brothers who basically studied all different religions. Um, mm -hmm. And we would build and we would sit and we would talk. And so when I noticed so many of our young black men getting incarcerated with life sentences, 20 mm -hmm. years, 25 mm -hmm. years, right. that's what I said, well, when I get out, because it's I knew I was going to be getting out in about five years at the time I started studying, well, right. closer to six years. I said, I want to put something together to really help the youth so that they don't follow the path that I follow. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I had got on the path of destruction, self-destruction, because of the way society, well, one of the reasons the way society is, is, is set up and constructed. Right. And I was able to basically, in a sense, understand the transatlantic slave trade, what that consisted of, and how we were basically, in a sense, um, separated as a people and sent mm. throughout all over the planet Earth That's as, right. as That's slaves. Right. That's right. And so I said, wow. I said, they really got us in a, in a trick box mm -hmm. wherein we blame ourselves for the condition that we in, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the status as far as our economical status as far as being what people consider to be poor right when and, and it affects you psychologically more than anything even even outside of the economics part right just even the 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 the, the, the culture part the our, our mentality the the unification of our family the necessity of black family was all removed indeed and um and that, so when i looked at it I said, well, let me come here and when I get out and try to help our babies um, to the best of our ability, um, we focus on the whole family, but we we understand that it starts, um, we understand it starts in the home, but if the home is broken, right. that's kind of a bad start. So what we try right. to do is supplement the home with after school programs, rites of passage programs, right, uh, right. programs that bring, you know, the community together. Um, right. Now let's let's talk more to that. Now you said with the programs, uh, I want folks to be able to understand that KCSSU is not just an idea anymore. This is actually what you have brought into fruition that you have been working and doing for years. This is not something you're just thinking of and, and want to bring into fruition. You're actually doing this currently. Yes, indeed. Um, I came home January 2013, so it's been over five years and we hit the ground running. Right. Um, we had our first book bag giveaway in this community right here where I grew up, Raleigh North Apartments, That's right. um, Millbank Court Apartments. We've always called it Raleigh North. Right. And the event went well to the point where the management, you know, they liked what we was doing, so they let us use the community center to have our Saturday cultural awareness classes right. where we were able to teach the children about Maya. Mm -hmm. And we was able to teach the children about Havambe. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, a term that was coined by Jomo Kenyatta, the first right. African president of Kenya, which means let's pull together. Because right. at the end of the day, that's the main thing that we as a people have to do is to get on the same page and understand what we have to do for ourselves. Right. We can't expect any foreign people that's to right. save us. That's it's right. it's going to be us. And so after the culture awareness classes, um, we had we had two summer camps. This is our second year of doing our after school um, program, which we saw as vital. Um, even though we're a cultural based organization, we understand that we can't teach our high culture until our children are able to read proficiently, um, understand and understand math at a high level. Mm -hmm. So we put this together with St. Matthew's AME Church, um, which is one of our partners where they, um, you know, they have retired educators who help us to lead the charge in helping our children out. Mm. And then we've also partnered 
with um, two HBCUs, St. Augustine's University and Shaw University, where the students come over and they assist us in tutoring um, the children. And, and this is where it gets serious. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the education of our children. And this is where, um, you know, it, the frustration sets in is when, you know, we send our children to these school systems and they start looking for things wrong with our children. Right. Um, with ADHD. ADHD, um, all the uh, ADD. Like, and, and, and they start recommending them to go see therapists, psychiatrists, and drugs. they give them these psychotropic drugs. And the psychotropic drugs, what it does, it slows them down. And the parents, um, unfortunately, they don't really have the understanding of how these have an adverse effect on mm. the children long term. Especially if the child is not even properly diagnosed. Oh, indeed. Yes, yes. And it all boils down to um, economics and yeah. money. Um, because the pharmaceutical. That's it. That's pharmaceutical. Right. When you understand the pharmaceutical a industry. A whole bunch of people get paid off of sick black children. Right. It's a trillion dollar industry. Mm, the therapists get paid. The schools get paid. And so they target our children in the lower economic development. That's right. That's who they target. That's right. And the parents think that they're coming in to help the child when really they're setting the child up for long term um long term mental health diseases. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've encountered this directly. This is not just an opinion of yours. I'm sure dealing with because I know I've been in several of your events, several of your right. after school and I see 60, 50, 60 children. So yes. From you dealing day to day with 50 right. or 60 children in an entire neighborhood, right. you have most definitely encountered where it's a situation like maybe this child, you know, doesn't have, he just, he just needs the attention. That's what it is. He's alive. not sick. Right. There's nothing wrong with this child. Right. He don't need these drugs. These drugs are actually making him worse. Right. Indeed. And, and then it Say learned, more to that. It, it leads to drug addiction mm. as they get older. Because, you know, um, I've had children walk up to me and say, I took my medicine today. Like it's a normal thing. Mm, like, and, like it's an accomplishment. Right. And mm. it's not. And I've, and I've seen times, I can count probably over 10 times when I go to pick some of the children up. And the mother will say, you don't have to worry about him today. I gave him his medicine. Mm. And the, 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 they put the little girls on the medicine too, but mm -hmm. our little boys had more of a problem mm -hmm. with it than, than the little girls. Right. And see, this is where, like I say, the frustration comes in because in our African-American community, in our black community, we have enough professionals, mm -hmm. psychologists, right. doctors, teachers. lawyers, L right. retired teachers right. who understand exactly what's taking place right. and what society is doing to our young people. Speak. And yet they refuse to step up and speak out against what's taking place. And I'm not talking about everybody because you do have your revolutionary minds Indeed. who want to liberate the children and liberate us as a people. Indeed, but you, what you're doing is identifying factually what the slow process is. Indeed. Yes. Because not everybody is taking it serious. We're not collectively right. taking it serious right. and actually creating actions to prevent it. Right. In society, basically, in a sense, um, sets that up to where the mm -hmm. only thing we become, be concerned about is our own individual lives and our own individual families. As long as we okay, we feel like we okay. That's right. But we're not thinking about the group as a whole. That's right. On an international basis. That's right. And that goes back to what you were saying earlier about us being scattered everywhere Indeed. over the globe. That's oh, yes. most definitely what births the lack of brotherly, sisterly love that is very evident and present in our relationships as it pertains to strangers and dealing with ourselves today. And that's, you know, and really to be honest with our organization, KCSSU, we're just really still laying down the foundation right. before we can really get on the same page and really understand our high culture and what we have to do as a people. Mm -hmm. See, in our community, is so much destruction right. with, like you said, the, 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 some of the music, right. some, some, a lot of hip hop right. is negative. Right. Um, um, television. Television, movies. And online, being uh, online. Everything. Yeah. And, it's, and it's negative. And that's why, you know, it's like when we get with our children, we work with, and I at the school program, it's K through five. 
our rites of passage program is for the boys 10 through 17. Right. And to hear what some of the younger children say to each other, and we got to constantly reinforce to them, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Right. So we understand where a lot of this negative behavior is coming from. Right. Um, it's coming from media. It's right. coming from the community, the environment. It's exactly. coming from the home. Exactly. It's coming from school. Mm -hmm. And so what we try to do is we try to focus on my yacht. You know, because my yacht is a foundation that once you learn to love yourself, right. Truly love yourself. That's right. You love your brothers and sisters. That's right. And you don't want to see no harm coming to them. That's right. And you have a peace within, right? That basically is is contagious mm -hmm. with other brothers and sisters mm -hmm. of, of, of that's like minded, like yourself. That's right. But when the children experience um, a bunch of cursing and fighting and mm -hmm. stabbing and shooting on a daily basis, they think that that's normal behavior. And that's this right. is what they're supposed to grow up and that's do. Right. Yeah, they th and, and you know what, brother? And you know you know for yourself, because you know a lot of the people that I know, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people that you know, mm -hmm. we have what it takes right here in Raleigh, North Carolina Factual. to make a difference to reverse it. in our children's lives, and our, even Factual. the adults. That's right. It's that's selfless right. service. That's right. Giving freely that's of right. yourself. That's right. I ain't understanding the big picture. That's right. Of what we have to do. That's um, a fact. You know, to reclaim our place on the throne on the planet Earth. That's right. That's you know, a, that's a fact. To and, be able to sit at the table. And that sort of is a good segue because I want you to speak more about, you know, as you said, with the youth and the rites of passage. Right. Because some folks may not even know the proper proper uh, uh, context of that. So I would like you to say more of what you do with the rites of passage and who are you dealing with to, to bring that into fruition? The rites of passage basically is helping our young black boys to understand the transition from being a child, uh, a teenager, mm -hmm. and to growing into being a black man. And what we want to get across to these brothers is the challenges that we face. And not only the challenges, more importantly, the obstacles mm -hmm. that are set in front of us because what they do is from the time we are born basically they keep records of us indeed they keep even in school all different types of records and that's how from they your birth certificate to everything else right right and we had some great brothers uh working with us um KCSSU, our associate director, Jimmy Stewart. All right. Shout Bril out to Jimmy. Brilliant, Shout brilliant to Jimmy. brother. Yes, brother. I mean, Jimmy. you know, and he is always, you know, keeping us on point and on task. Right. Is we need to show them the documentary 13. Mm, yeah, yeah. You I've see? seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Powerful documentary. Mm -hmm. You know, so they can see how the system is set up. See, the prison industrial complex and the way they operate is, is they based the prisons that they're going to build on the test third school. grade in the grade testing. That's right. Because they figure like this, and and, and I have to be clear here, I would say 60% of the children in our after school program, K through five, 60% of them have already failed one time. Mm. And some of them too. 60% right. of the children have right. already failed the grade right. at least once. Right, and this, and, and, and see, the problem lies in early childhood education mm -hmm. and pre-K, where a lot of our young mothers, they can't afford it. Mm, you right. know what I mean? And they really don't have the That's tools right. necessary to educate their children. And, and, and that also doesn't identify that they're bad with their money. Not at all. A lot of, um, a, a lot, and a lot I know, they work. Right. It's just not enough money and it's expensive. Right, indeed. And and you and you are, are are trying to create a situation to to to, to assist in even in that. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. That early childhood education is is vital, and that's one thing that we're lacking. Mm -hmm. and one thing that we're gonna have to work on because um you know studies show that when a child is start learning when they like eight nine months even earlier than that. Right. Oh right. Right. Just working with them, singing ABCs to them, right. counting the ten and things of that nature. They are going to become proficient, mm. you know. And mm -hmm. it's and that's as a community we have to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even when you look at the black politicians, mm -hmm. 
you know, at some point they gonna have to step up. Right. And they can't continue to tap dance right. around issues. That's right. That really affect our community. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's the, the, the big picture has got to be what do we leave behind for our future generations to build on? Right. What type of foundation are we setting? We already know the foundation that some of our greats have set, like Marcus Garvey, Harriet Tur right. Tubman, right. Malcolm X, Dr. Martin Luther King, right. and many others. Some who we've heard of, many that we haven't heard of. Right. Who still out here fighting today. To this day. Right. And that's what we have to do. We have to continue to fight, but we have to do it in a more organized manner. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to get to that point, we have to sublimate our egos more than anything. Because it's not about any of us as an individual, that's right, any bro. one organization, that's right, bro. any one agency, any one business. It's about us as a collective whole. That's right, brother. That's right, that's right. So, as it pertains to the activities outside of, you know, the um, the camping and and even the rites of passage, right. what what else, you know, does KCSSU offer? Well, first let me speak on the rites of passage yes. and the workshops, which are going to be important. Right. Um, you know, we're going to focus on education. Um, we're going to focus on entrepreneurship um one of the big things i think is going to be conflict resolution mm. but the most important out of all i think is going to be the culture and history because giving these young brothers a, a chance to really understand what self-pride is mm. and self-dignity and self-love mm. and that they come from a rich illustrious history mm -hmm. regardless of what they've been taught mm about us as a people. Other programs that we have is we have a um, food assistance program basically where we assist families like say if they run running short of food or whatever we give them a, a voucher mm. and they're able to go and get enough food for their household for a whole week and they give the food according to how much how many people in the house mm, and not just the making everything standard for everybody indeed right That's so powerful. you got five people in the house they're gonna give you enough and they give you good food they give you meat right. they give you the, the staples that you need right um another thing that we do basically is you know over the years you know mothers you know they get pregnant and right. they need transportation to the doctor yeah you know we we do it, you know what I mean? Um, mm. Because we really believe in selfless service. Right. Um, giving freely of ourselves. What we also are doing is we provide transportation for the girls who live in the community to go to the Girl Scouts every other um, mm. Saturday. You know, which we feel is a good program because it's something positive. Right. Where we, you know, the girls are able to lead the neighborhood. Right. And it's two powerful sisters, um, Sister Monique and Sister Ashley, mm -hmm. who work with the girls over there at the Gardner Community Center. Okay. Um, that's ran by Mo Johnson. Mo Johnson. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, sister beautiful Mo. sister. Yeah, sister yes, Mo powerful Johnson. sister. Doesn't KC, KCSSU also assist, you know, high school age and college age? Well, now this, now we got the students from St. Augustine Shaw coming, so right. we we are we like that for the simple fact of while they're helping the children, mm -hmm. we're able to help them. Okay, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah, I see exactly with, what you're with saying. With knowledge on life and things mm -hmm. of that nature, it's and like, giving yeah. them practical like the medicine, experience, the medicine and the candy, indeed. Yeah, giving yeah. them practical experience and working with the children yeah. and understanding what's going on in some of our lower development yeah. um, communities. Yeah. Um, so so I feel like that's important. Unfortunately, um, over there in the area um, that we work in, yeah. we've been there since 2013 and we have not identified one graduating senior. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's, and when I tell everybody Hold that, on. Say that again, man. we have not identified one graduating senior. And what I mean by that is all the children basically that have been through our program, now, most, some of them in the 10th grade, now 10th and 11th grade, yeah. because we've been, this is our sixth year being over there, and um, nobody has graduated. Um, they mm -hmm. drop out, and that's, that's one of the main reasons why we started the after school program. Mm -hmm. Because we say, you know, it's our responsibility to give these children an a, a honest opportunity at understanding the importance of school, going through school, graduating, and being college eligible. 
You know, now whether they decide to go or not is their decision, but at least for them to be eligible to, be to have, have that option. option. Yeah. That's important. So we uh, wanna, you know, keep we keep a close eye on the development of our children. Mm -hmm. uh, we assess them and and, 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 and see where their their weak points are, mm -hmm. see where their strong points are. And the children they the ability to learn is there. And they're bright, but it's just a matter of working with them. What do you want to bring to the community of Raleigh, the black community of Raleigh? Develop world leaders. Mm. I mean, because we're not on this planet by ourselves mm. as black people. Mm. And we have to be able to sit at the table with all other nations. That's right. And garner the respect mm. that we give up. That is due to us. But in order for it to be due to us, we. And I, and I really don't want to use this term, we have to earn our respect yeah. because respect should be given. Yeah. But at the same time, the truth of the matter in reality is if we don't respect ourselves, ain't nobody else going to respect us. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. And right now, unfortunately, as a group of people, we're not respecting each other. Mm -hmm. We don't respect each other's thoughts. And as black men, we are looked upon as the bottom of the totem pole that's right. we get no respect that's right. and not only do we not get no respect it's hard that's right. and that's not complaining but it's the facts and i'm not that's talking right. about myself because mm -hmm. i'm a warrior that's just right. like you're a warrior that's right you know what i mean and that's we're right. gonna see our way through it that's and that's right. why we do the things we do right. and we revolutionary the right. way we revolutionary but a lot of our brothers are not are not and they have it hard and they are criticized and critiqued mm -hmm. without really understanding how we got in this position and condition. Right. So what we're trying to do. Because it wasn't by accident. Indeed. It was intentionally, intentionally done. Intentionally done. So we want to be a world leader. And we want, you know, the, the, the young brothers and sisters to be community leaders, to take pride in their community, to take pride in their self. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, everybody ain't gonna be no politician. That's right. You know what I mean? But we have to have top politicians in our community, top doctors, That's top right. everything. And more than anything, we have to have land, property, businesses, everything that we need. Not saying that once we get all that, we're gonna truly be an independent people mm -hmm. on this soul, mm -hmm. you know, because we gotta understand where we are. And really, to be honest, um, brother, and this is something that we didn't touch on. And the spirit, our spiritual foundation is based on the family structure, mm -hmm. black man, woman, and child. and child. And that's that's the thing that has us disorganized and disenfranchised mm. as a people is the the separation of the black man, woman, and child. Mm. Where now, you know, it's a it's mostly single parent homes, mm -hmm. women raising the children. Mm -hmm. And I think that once we realize the importance of having a stable family home right. with positive, because they often quote, um, it takes a village to raise a child, right. but it takes the right village That's right. to raise a child. To raise a child, right. It has, right. And we have to be positive and we have to have that strong, um, positive family structure where you have the male principle and the female principle. Right. It can't just be a female principle mm -hmm. because then the little boys are missing that male figure and mm -hmm. the girls are missing, missing that, that protective male figure right. in their lives. That's right. And it can't just be a man in the house because right. then they missing the female. Right, which and is that's terrible. vital. You miss that female. That mother love. Ooh, it's nothing like it. The compassion, the right. strength, right. the resilience that come from that Everything. is the black woman. The queen mother. Oh my you goodness. Know, you, and, your, um, your household will be in turmoil. Right. That's you know? exactly right. It's so for anybody who needs to get in contact with you, to reach out to you, what how can they how can they reach to learn more and to assist? KCSSU, could you tell them how they get contact? Yes, indeed. You can contact us. Um, email um, KCSSUNITY at gmail.com, or you can call um, me personally um, at 919 825 6643, and you can also check out our website, KCSSU.org. Brother, I thank you for coming to take time to explain all of that to me.
all the time, brother. I thank you for driving while black women. Indeed, man. Like that, man. Indeed, driving <laughs> while you. black. Yeah. That's a powerful concept, yes, brother. Yes, it is. Yes, and um, it is. before I go, I would like to just shout out this brother, Kelvin Bear Gervais, for um everything he does for the community. Um, thank you, basically, he used to be with the Carolina, and he always had open arms for whenever we would call and we would ask him to do a story for us. Yeah. He would show up, take well, pictures at the community garden that we was assisting in. Mm -hmm. He came to our Saturday enrichment program at St. Matthew's AME mm -hmm. and he's just been very supportive. I think I even when you were over um me and, me and Brother Spivey came over Indeed, to... Indeed, when right, we did the uh, summer camp. Yeah, the church yeah, on Home the Street. Are, yeah, the yes, indeed. Yep. Yeah, he came bro, and made a, a, a beautiful doing. presentation. Yeah, uh, and the brother's good. been very supportive. And, you Thank know, you, I really appreciate him and love him as a brother. Yeah, the work brother, that he's brother, doing. Brother. Black First Network. Thank driving you, Wild Black. Thank you, Hey, the straight soldier. Warrior. And we're going to keep... Indeed. And we're going to keep having you up here. We're going to keep up with with your growth and, and we're gonna assist in it as well. Hey brother, we appreciate it. I appreciate it, brother.